Welcome to a HitFix happy hour here at HitFix headquarters. I'm Roth Cornett. I'm Louis Fertel for now. For now and forever. And today we're gonna talk all about the Emmys. Louis, you know what? There's a lot of TV. There's so much TV as a matter of fact that it is impossible to keep up with the sheer volume of it, even for those that are voting on the Emmys. And that means that we got, we and get, a lot of sort of repeat offenders mm -hmm. in terms of both the nominees and the wins every year. So here's my question to you and you. What show or actor are you ready to retire forever from nominations at the Emmys? What's nice is like actors end up sort of retiring themselves after they win for a while. Like Jim Parsons isn't nominated, things like that. Like John Cryer wasn't nominated. Um, I will say, I mean, this seems so obvious, but like Modern Family being nominated again, I mean, it's like, it's won five times now, which is like Frasier level, so that's already insane. Let me say this, I don't think the show is literally ever bad. I think it never hits below a B minus, but I also don't think it really gets above a B plus either. Right. So for it to win five years in a row seems a little egregious and um, reprehensible, frankly. Re it, reprehensible. I mean, and I, I feel now bad because I'm going to repeat what you said and say Modern Family for me too. And I think for everyone, I think that there's so much great content content out there. There's so much great comedy out right, there. Yeah. And that you need to sort Weird of, comedy, you know, new comedy. Weird comedy. Yeah. And, and when Modern Family first came on, it was fresh, mm -hmm. you know, and it was new and it was exciting because a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least enough that we wanted to pay attention to it. Um, but now it's sort of become old hat, and I think it's time to give some other ten things attention because the truth is, the benefit of an award show is that people that aren't watching something, it sort of can work as a curator, you right. know, and people can be turned on to a show that maybe they're not watching. I think also maybe like this, when that show premiered like six years ago, it was unusual to have a comedy with like like six or seven great performances on yes. it. But now we have a bunch of those shows. Yes. Like Veep is that, you know what I mean? Absolutely, so. absolutely. Veep. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> that gets me to, what are you happy though that was actually included this year? I think, well, they did a lot of rectifying this year. There's lots of stuff nominated that Except we Except with really rectify. So, right, LOL. Um, so I'm like, I'm obviously happy for Amy Schumer I, and Tatiana Maslany. I yeah. think, can I say something about that performance? I'm not saying she's not great on that show. It is sort of 10 different performances. So it's sort of like nominating like an SNL star or something, you know? So by the way, if she loses, it's like she lost 10 times, yeah. which is really exciting. Well, she's been dissed about 30 times then. Well, right. no, she's been dissed 20 and right. then she'll have the, lost 10. She's, she's like 120 <laughs> time loser, Tatiana Maslany. Um, or Maslany. Yeah. Maslany, yeah. Um, so the question was, what am I happy that was included? Oh, I, I'm psyched that Lisa Kudrow was nominated for the comeback. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I gotta say, and I don't think she's gonna win, but Amy Schumer is the one. I just like, yeah. I, I like the rest of America, and I, I feel sort of a little silly saying this because it's, it is, again, so obvious, but I am 100% in love with her. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I have a shrine to her. I think that we all do, probably, at this point. She is a national hero, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Um, we need to, they're talking about minting different coins. Let's mint one to Amy. I mean, she, <laughs> we have lots of coins, right? There's surely there's room. <laughs> there's surely there's room. Do you know what I like about her? She just takes like the most direct hits at people. Like there's not much, she's like, you know who sucks today? This type of person. And yes. then like, it's like, bam, like it's not nice. Yeah. You know? So there's like an element to her where it's like people are connecting with her and I don't find her particularly pandering either. So. She's not, but it's, it, you know what? It's not mean. I actually really hate mean humor. That's like. It's the only thing I like in this world, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of really cruel humor. I like the laugh with, not the laugh at. I mean, I, but I don't think she's mean. I think that she is um, incisive, mm -hmm. but I don't think she's mean, you know? And I think that she's pointing out sort of things that are happening in our culture, but not in a cruel way. Yeah. Um, we love Amy is what we're trying to say. So let's talk about the snubs, the people that were not included. Yeah. What are sort of the most egregious snubs this year for you? I'm gonna say, it, I mean, there really aren't a ton of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, would, I will say I'm upset that the comeback was not nominated for best series, mm -hmm. because to me that feels like the kind of show where like, I mean, like, I'm getting think PC here, but like, if it was about a dude, people would be, obs it, it would be such an obvious nominee in the way that Birdman won Best Picture and it's sort of the same story, right? Like, like an actor, like, trying to regain, like, you, you being egotistical and, and trying to become a hero again, you know? And meanwhile, Lisa, Lisa That is a Kudrow, fascinating piece that I want you to write. I'm gonna say, <laughs> I just think, I mean, like, when, when that show premiered 10 years ago, I was not a fan of how incredibly awkward it was. I'm not a cringe person. But it's like, her performance is so 
it, it's just so creepy. It's, it's a creepy good performance, and I can't think of any other performance that's like that. Now, with the possible exception of Laurie Metcalf in Getting On, who was also snubbed. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe it's just, it's like raw. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, and, and I agree with you, like comedy that makes me uncomfortable, well, it makes me uncomfortable, and I don't always like feeling uncomfortable, but there, she is such a good actress, and I think she's an underrated actress, too. I have one that's kind of unusual, which is stunts. Daredevil was not nominated for stunts, which is insane to me. Look, I get it. Like. Genre is always going to have a harder time at awards, whether it's the Academy Awards or the Emmys or the Smurf Awards. Any award show will shun genre, that's the way it is. But stunts? I mean, are you kidding me? The show was incredible. Had one of the most amazing fight scenes that we've seen on television, certainly this year, but probably in the last five years. And I think it is like appalling that it wasn't nominated in that category. Another one that befuddles me is, can we talk about Key and Peele and how weird that is? Wait, no, but, but they got a couple of nominations, right? Like he's nominated in the best support, Ke uh, Keegan-Michael Key is nominated. But that's my point. Okay, so the show is called Key and Peele. Yeah, okay? right. <laughs> he is in the title, yes. <laughs> He is nominated for Best Supporting, and then his co-star is not. Right. Like, how does that, I mean, like, yes, I'm glad that there is a nomination, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make any sense. Right, no, it's just like positioning. It's sort of like, uh, in the, for the Oscars this year, Rooney Mara, who's like one of the, one of the undeniable co-leads of Carol is going for Supporting Actress. Yeah. It's just like, literally because another person is in it, you can claim to be supporting. It's all strategic. Yeah, and how Denzel Washington was nominated for lead actor for Training Day, which right. he was in for, what, 15 minutes? It's like, it's, it was, or like Meryl Streep and the Devil Wears Prada, yeah. definitely supporting the Anne Hathaway, yeah. right. In any event, yeah. I find that befuddling, um, so I feel like, and The Americans, which is a show that is so critically beloved, which again is just getting no one. I unfortunately, I've not seen an episode, so I can't participate in the collective outrage, but that's, it seems so <laughs> mighty that I'm afraid to even discuss it. <laughs> Fair enough, we will yeah. move on in that case. Um, one of the big things that we often discuss after award shows, we being you and I, I right. assume, and, <laughs> and, and, us. and yes. the collective we, are, are, they're just like the little moments that happen, like whether it's like the Oscar selfie or like Jen tripped on her dress again and again and again, like she keeps tripping on her damn dress. Right. Why can't she walk in a dress? You, you would think at this point she would practice. So what sort of appearance or moment, if you could predict, are you most looking forward to? I have to say, I may be in the minority here, I think Amy Poehler saves all of her best work for award shows. Uh -huh. um, and so, what I've loved is over the past few years when she's been nominated for stuff, it began when she was nominated for SNL, and she organized this stunt where all the actresses in the category put on like silly glasses when their thing was announced when their names were announced for the nominations. And so I'm looking forward to her, this is her last breath for uh, Parks and Recreation, doing some sort of, like one time it was a pageant and they put a crown on Melissa McCarthy's head and stuff. So I'm hoping, and you know, uh, the odds are that Julia Louis-Dreyfus is gonna win again, mm -hmm. that like she'll organize some sort of hilarious bit with her because I, I, she, I mean, Amy Poehler really does improve award shows single-handedly. Yeah. I'm hoping that Mel Brooks wins um, right. for best appearance and he was on The Comedians, A, because he was really funny in mm. that episode of The Comedians, but B, because I just think a Mel Brooks speech will make the whole night that much classier. Right. You know? He's also like, a, he's literally the 2,000 year old man or whatever. He really it, is yeah. at this point. You know, in fact, if he came out as the 2,000 year old man, it would just make it that much more amazing. Right. Um, but I want to hear Mel. So like if he doesn't win, I feel like we're not going to hear Mel and that's going to be a travesty. Also, there's, I think there's a serious chance he's going to win. I feel like that's the kind of category where the vet, like it's like a Bob Newhart winning for the Big Bang Theory yeah. type category. Yeah. yeah, no, I think he, I think if he didn't, we would be shocked. Speaking of, what do you think that people are going to be sort of most outraged by when inevitably things like John Hamm, is it going to be like, really you guys, like after all of this time, you're really not going to give this to John Hamm? Do you right. think it's going to be that? See, that's interesting. It really does feel like to me he is going to win, okay. but... I mean, if he doesn't win, I mean, I think people will be terribly angry. I, the thing is, though, I really like about, I kind of like about the Emmys that, like, there are certain people for whatever reason, cosmically, it doesn't happen for. Like, I'm not, I'm not a fan of, like, justice always being applied. There should be an element of intrigue to people not getting it. I will be particularly pissed if Jane Krakowski doesn't get an Emmy soon. Okay. And she's nominated for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, which is, like, the seventh best performance she's ever given. But still, yeah. I want her to win something. But it's yeah. still an amazing performance, yeah. oh, by the way. Oh, my God, yes. I love that show. Unbreakable well, Kimmy Schmidt is one sort of dark horse that I would love to come out and suddenly win things. I yeah, don't think it will. Um, I know that people are pulling for Parks and Rec, um, which I also don't think probably will happen. Yeah, either. I don't think so either. No. Yeah, but we'll see. And either way, they're great shows. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I think it's, there's a part of me that's like John Hamm will be in really good company if he doesn't win, right. you know, so maybe it just doesn't even matter. But there's another part of me that's like, come on. Right. Well, I mean, I would just like one actor to win from Mad Men, right? Like yeah. if Elizabeth Moss won, that'd be really satisfying, you yeah. know? Final thoughts, what are you most looking forward to come this Sunday night? I, I just like any spectacle. I like people gathering around a damn TV to watch something stupid and pretending to care about it and being miffed and thrilled and all these things. So the, I honestly love the whole thing and my Twitter feed will be hilarious. Believe, believe it. Where can they find you on Twitter? Um, at Louis Vertel. Very cryptic, I know. <laughs> and I'm at Roth Cornette. Make sure to tune back in on Sunday night where Louis and I will be doing an Emmy wrap-up show and talking about all the wins and losses of the night. And we're talking about falling in dresses, not the actual wins and losses. Keep it locked right here for hip to hit fix for all things Emmys. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Generally love us, please. And we will see you here on Sunday night.